All right, for this short video, I wanna to demonstrate to you how you can determine the patient's heart rate using their EKG following a method that's called the 300, 150, 100 method, or we could just call it the big box method to be a little more simple, okay? So using this big box method, you can calculate the patient's heart rate, but one caveat to this is that you can only use this method if their rhythm is regular. Okay? Their R to R interval has to march out perfectly and be a regular rhythm or you cannot use this method. It won't be accurate. So if they're in atrial fibrillation, which is an irregularly irregular rhythm, the big box method is not accurate for determining their heart rate and you would need to use the six second method in that case. So let me go ahead and demonstrate on a patient's EKG how you can use this 300, 150, 100 method to determine the patient's heart rate. Now, the very first thing you want to do with the big box method is look across your EKG, find one of the QRS complexes or a nice R wave peak that happens to land right on, on a big line, okay, right on one of your darker lines like this one. Notice how that one lands right on one of our dark lines as opposed to you know this one which is somewhere out in the middle. So I, I always kind of scan, try to find that one, uh, one that lands right on a line or nearest to it, and then we simply count over. This would be 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, and we can keep going from there, but notice we don't have to because in this situation, we've got our next R wave occurring just on the other side of 100. So in this case, the patient's heart rate is right around 90 beats per minute using this big box method. So on this EKG, I wanna show you something important. Notice this patient's EKG is irregularly irregular. The R waves do not march out in a regular fashion. For that, for that reason, we cannot use the 300 method or the big box method. We have to use a six second method. But I wanna show you why, why this does not work if the patient's EKG is not regular. So notice here, here's a, an R wave that lands right on one of our dark lines. We've got our next one over would be 300. Our next one over being 150, and this one occurred right before it. So if we just used this R to R interval, we might call this patient's rate somewhere in the realm of you know 180 beats per minute. But notice if we were to use, uh, for example, this one, it occurs, this QRS complex occurs right before the dark line. So we're gonna go over one box, 300, go over another box, 150, go over another box, which is 100, and this happens to fall below 150. So if we use this R to R interval, we might call this more like 130, and there's a big difference between 130 and 180. So this is why we don't want to use the big box method if the patient's rhythm is not regular. One more quick example then, let's go ahead and use this regular rhythm. Uh, this QRS happens to land right on a dark line, 300, 150, this happens to be just below it. Now if the next R to R interval, excuse me, the next R wave landed right here on the next big box, then this patient's heart rate would be 300 beats per minute, okay? If it happened to land right on the next box, we would say 150. So hopefully that makes sense how you can use the big box method to determine the patient's heart rate if they are in a regular rhythm. All right, there you go, that simple. So again, caveat, their heart rate, their rhythm rather, has to be regular, cannot be irregular, and just make sure that you find that QRS complex or that R wave that's right on one of the big boxes and count them over, so it's that simple. So don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, turn on the bell notifications so that you get an email every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.